Welcome, one and all, to another episode of Pacific Forum 4 Episode Review. I am your host, Mike, and in this episode, I'm going to be re reviewing The Village Bride. Now, in this particular story of Star Wars Visions, it takes place on a planet that was ravaged by the Separatists during the Clone Wars. We also meet a bride and groom, Haru and Asu. And Asu and Haru are ascending a mountain for a sacred ritual. We also meet a masked woman and an explorer. We learn that these people are one with nature, one with the planet, and they value everything about this planet. Now, in this episode, there are some raiders who come along and instead of taking the village elder the village chief they end up taking haru as part of an agreement that was already prearranged so what ends up happening is the masked woman and the explorer end up intervening on behalf of the villagers after having a cordial dinner with them as it's deemed bad luck not to join the village for their celebration, their ce ceremony. So what ends up happening is when they're at this dinner in the village, Saku, the sister of Haru, ends up standing up in protest because Haru is the one that's being offered to these raiders in exchange for these raiders to leave the village alone, leave the people alone. This village has been ravaged enough and these people have suffered enough between the separatists and now these raiders that they're trying to come to some sort of means to an end. What ends up happening is in this episode, Saku is discovered by some battle droids that were left over by the separatists these battle droids have been reprogrammed by these raiders and one of the things that they find is a thermal detonator so as saku is going to be executed by the leader of the raiders the masked woman appears now the masked woman announces that she's a Jedi. She has a yellow katana lightsaber, which actually looked pretty cool when it ignited. And she engages the leader of the Raiders. She ends up killing him. And her compatriot, the Explorer, he has a sniper blaster. So he ends up hitting a few of the battle droids and destroying a few of them and one of the things that he has is this helmet that he wears as he's exploring the planet as you know this takes place after the clone wars so the mass jedi who announces that she's a jedi is trying to you know st stay low lay low and not be discovered by anyone who might give her up to you know anyone who might be looking to her specifically the empire even though it's not even mentioned that it's the empire you could pretty much gather that the empire would be after her as you know if you want to link it to what you saw in rebels inquisitors would probably be after her as she is a jedi and they're there to hunt them down but the inquisitors really don't pay any, any part at all in the story. What the story is about is, you know, these people who are one with the planet. You have these two individuals who 
are on this planet seeking refuge for the moment. They interact with the villagers. They learn of the sacrifice that's being made. And they make a stand. So the explorer with his sniper blaster, as I said, blasts a few of the battle droids. He takes off his helmet. He throws it. It lands in between a circle of battle droids. And then it ignites and goes into the ship that the raiders came on. And ends up destroying the ship. It also ends up destroying the battle droids that are near the ship. As some were caught up in the fire. And I can kind of fathom a guess that part of the controls for the battle droids were also linked to the computer system on board the ship. So, this Jedi ends up freeing the villagers from these raiders and she and the explorer end up parting ways the jedi gets onto her ship and the explorer remains behind on the planet and one of the things that's also brought up as to why this planet is sort of sacred to this jedi is that her master was from there we get a flashback during the episode that's taking place during the clone wars where we see the young masked woman hiding under some sheets and when we hear some shouting and fighting there's even a scene where the masked woman closes her eyes and all you see is a red lightsaber blade so who that red lightsaber blade belongs to it's never told it's left to a mystery but it's one of those kind of mysteries you appreciate because you could already, you know, gather your own thoughts as to who it might be. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I know. I I immediately started thinking Vader. Couldn't help it. So what did I think of this episode? Well, considering when it started off, I wasn't really sure. And as I started watching it, I really began to appreciate that it was you know based on a lot of japanese culture from what i understand of it and you know just how sacred certain things are to them just you know the respect issue and you know how they regard family and friends and, and that's what i got in this episode and you know with the people of this village and the planet their respect for nature, or as they call it, Majina. I'm sure that there's, you know, a translation as to what Majina means. Maybe it means nature. I don't know. I don't know. I'll have to look it up. But I, I really like that aspect. I, I really appreciate Japanese culture. And that's what this episode to me was about, was, you know, just how deep Japanese culture is. And I, I can appreciate that. This episode, it's just one of those episodes where I found myself watching it four times before I even doing this review. I was watching it four times. But there is, there is one thing I, I've always found interesting. Something's, you know, been translated from one country to the next, east and west. You know, the character names. The character names... You know, for, you know, some of the characters in the English dub, the Explorer is actually called Valco. While in the, the Japanese dub, the character was actually Vaughn. So I found that interesting. And also, even though she's never called this name in... The episode we're never actually given her name but if you look at the subtitles it calls her you know masked woman but the name is actually f and i found it interesting that that was you know one of the names kept from both the japanese and english translation so i find things like that interesting maybe other people don't maybe you don't but i find things like that interesting whenever you have you know, 
a property that's shared between, you know, multiple countries and the name changes for whatever reason that they give characters. I, I've always found that interesting. And as I've stated before, you know, I grew up, you know, a G1 Transformers fans. And, you know, there were some characters that were named differently. And, you know, I, again, found that interesting. One example, in the U.S. version of Transformers, Rumble was actually their purple and blue cassette, mini cassette of sound waves. Meanwhile, in Japan, Frenzy, as we know him, who was the black and red mini cassette, is actually called Rumble. And it's actually Frenzy who is Rumble. Now, I haven't looked at recent Transformers items to see if maybe that's been changed throughout, you know, both the Japanese iteration of Transformers and, you know, those released here in the States, if, you know, they're both changed to, you know, the appropriate Japanese name. But again, I, I always find it interesting how, you know, it may be the same property. It may, you know, be the same character, but it doesn't necessarily carry the same name that but you know th that's just me maybe you know i i just look at things differently and maybe like i said you're going okay and i don't see the big deal in it. and it's not a big deal it's just an observation i've always made about how certain characters don't always share the same names what did i think of this episode overall i really enjoyed it if I were to give it a rating, well, I'm going to give this one a 5 out of 5, and I am going to give this one a 5 out of 5. I, I really enjoyed it. I, again, being so steeped in Japanese lore and Japanese culture, I, I really enjoyed that. I, I really did. I can't say it enough. I really enjoyed it. And, you know, what you learn about these villagers, what they've been through, you know, how it links the Clone Wars and how it, you know, does take place in between Revenge of the Sith and the original Star Wars movie, A New Hope. It, it really does. You, you can tell that it's taking place, you know, sometime after the Clone Wars. I don't know exactly when, but I, I like that aspect. I, I like it when you have a bridge from one era to another. I I appreciate that. So again, if I were to give this episode a rating, 5 out of 5, not a 4 out of 5, 5 out of 5. I appreciate each and every one of you for watching this review. If you like Star Wars Visions, let me know down in the comments, even if you don't like Star Wars Visions, because, you know, the whole disney thing the whole gina carano thing i understand i understand there are some people who just don't like what disney produced i don't blame them i liked the force awakens at first and then after rewatching it i realized how closely it was just a rehash of a new hope empire and a little bit of return of the jedi and then, of course, we got The Last Jedi, and I honestly have only watched that twice, and the first time, I enjoyed it. The second time, I, I didn't enjoy it that much, because I, I saw things in it that I just, uh, it, it just didn't sit with me. I'm going to go ahead and conclude it now. If you like what you saw in this video, please give this video a thumbs up. Share this video with your friends. Leave a comment down in the comment section below and subscribe to the Pacific Forum for our YouTube channel. Also, you can follow me on social media. The links will be down in the description below. I appreciate each and every one of you for watching. Whether you're a subscriber, whether you're a non-subscriber, thank you very much. The views help. And until the next episode, this has been Mike for Pacific Forum for episode reviews. Letting you all know, thank you and take care.